Um, okay, so let's um, let's go into first um, uh, uh, subthreshold conduction. So here we have a JFET, and I'm going to keep a constant gate uh, drain source voltage, and I'm going to uh, uh, sweep the gate voltage. And let's and so here's your your square law behavior. But let's plot it on a log scale. So let's go over to the right, plot that logarithmic. And here you can see the problem. Now this, this line here is the Berkeley spice equations. And the problem is the thing just shuts off once you're below threshold, the zero conduction. But you know, the part that's rather non-physical behavior. So even though this is a case where the IV curve is continuous in value and slope, the slope goes to zero, which never happens in a, in a, in a physical part where if you adjust this parameter eta, and I use the name eta because uh, when Berkeley Spice tried to get, do um, subthreshold conduction in, in, in uh, Berkeley Spice in uh, level three MOSFET, they tried to get it and they called it eta. So I just call it eta to be this parameter that uh, adjusts the uh, subthreshold conduction. It switches over from square law to exponential. So the, um, uh, uh, the threshold, the conduction never goes to zero. <clears throat> All right, let's look at, um, um, on x. So here we have another JFET, and R on x is the multiplier for um, um, uh, uh, in, in the linear region. And I'm just going to step R on x. So here you can see the saturation region, but the this slope here is the on resistance. I can independently affect uh, a change the on resistance without changing the saturation. So that allows me to independently match both the saturation and linear region with fairly simple, with rather very simple device equations, computation of light rate device equations, I can model a JFET now. Uh, there's one other thing I should show you, I forgot to mention. Uh, uh, we have these Casco devices, which allows Corvo to supply silicon carbide FETs of otherwise unreachable RDS on. And it entails a, a MOSFET and a JFET in, um, um, in uh, 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 it contains a MOSFET and a JFET is two different dice in one package. And the, um, the JFET handles the, um, the voltage and the, and the MOSFET uh, makes it enhancement mode. So that if you, gate, if you ground the gate and the source, the thing is off, which you'd, you'd want in most power applications. But all of this device here, actually, there's another inductor inductance in here that's supported. These both dice, these inductors are encapsulated in one native circuit element. So there's a new there's a new level MOSFET in QSpice. It's called a, a level 2010 because that's when the these Casco devices were introduced. So it uh, includes all of all the device equations, both FETs and these inductors in one native circuit element with a reduced node count. So it, um, it runs more robustly and you have this simple thing that you, you put a, a component on the schematic and the simulation just behaves like that component. You don't have to uh, cobble a bunch of different uh, lower uh, primitives together to get it. So that's another thing it does for the silicon carbide. But you know what, let's, let's actually do a, an LT, a, a QSpice demo, okay? Uh, the main difference between QSpice and um, other simulators is that it has a completely, it has a more modern GUI than you will normally find in a SPICE program, okay? And it has more modern GUI than you find in CAD tools. So basically you don't have a lot of toolbar buttons. Everything is right click menu. So you don't have to move the mouse all the way to the toolbar and move it all the way back. It's sad how much people like to use toolbars, kind of a 1990s technology. And people get good at using tool things with toolbars, and then they they feel they're great at using the app, and they spend all the time swatting at the computer with their mouse to get the thing to do the simplest things. Yes. So um, let's um, let's just do a, a simple sorry, let's let's do a uh, you know hello world type simulation. So I have hotkeys for all the different components, and um, Now, instead of having dialogues, everything is edited in place. The problem with having a dialogue is that you have to shift your eyes from what you're trying to edit to the dialogue, type in what you want to do, and then go back to the component. And that actually gets fatiguing. Yeah, um, exactly. uh, UI is more about ergonomics than anything else. You'll notice that as I type, I have a hint underneath 
that tells me all, what all these numbers do. And you can see there's a little software cursor here. The, this one micro I'm typing in, the software cursor is pointing at what I'm typing in. Yeah. And that's really helpful as well, because I think one of the, the, the biggest challenges of using Spice at all is understanding all of those um, options that you can put into parameters like Pulse for, for developing yeah. your, your circuit. So. Yeah, it, it, Spice suffers from its legacy. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, and so all the editors are in place. Like this editor is my mouse cursor. I can type in, you know, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's a full, uh, um, uh, a little editor with my mouse cursor. And now we just turn it on. Here's a little green on button, run simulation. So that's a, a little hello world, um, uh, Simulation. Now I'll show you the, nice. the a feature that I just started adding. Um, all right. So in uh, usually one simulation is not that interesting. You want usually want to look at multiple simulations with a step command. Yeah. So I'm going to step the resistor and I'm going to step the capacitor. And let's run the simulation now. You can see all these things, but the problem is it's hard to know what waveform dealt with uh, what, um, uh, what, what sets of values. So I just, I just recently added this navigator, press F6. And there will be the step simulation tool. You can double click on one or the other. You can sort them by different criteria. You can select, you know, which ones you want, apply selections, or you can plot all. And if you have a uh, attached cursor to this thing, then as you, uh, this cursor is, is these dashed lines point at which cursor it's at, or you can move the cursor with the navigation tool. That's really nice. I, I yeah. think, that, again, the, you're highlighting one of the, the Big challenges with spice tools in general. I mean, they're they're great for for implementing a simulation, but when it comes to usability and understanding and analyzing the results, it's um, it has been very clunky in the past. So it's uh, yeah, features like this that really make it highly usable. Yeah. Now there is one example when you for for people who haven't used QSpice, I always recommend the very first thing you do is you just run some simulations. You know, get that done. There's some examples here. So under file, open demo, there's a number of examples you can uh, look at. Um, and uh, the one that is, um, this is not on topic for a wide band gap, but this is the one that will uh, show the, um, uh, what QSpice is about as far as this mixed mode simulation thing. So this example would be a, a modern, switchboard power supply. I mean, this is not a clocked flop. This is a constant on time, but it uses a, a very clever constant on time algorithm. So it's also constant frequency, but it, you know, it has no error amplifier. There's basically no, um, there's no good frequency domain description of this thing. It's simply, you know, the crossover frequency is the Nyquist frequency, which means it is oscillating. It's oscillating at the switching frequency. They're, they're both the same feedback loop. And you can see how it's implemented. So this block here is hierarchical. You can enter schematic. And that's what's inside this thing. So inside this thing is, is this thing here. I call this Acme Semiconductor. It's a catalog part from that coyote that I used to, uh, from the supplier for that coyote. I used to enjoy watching Saturday mornings. And um, so here you see have the usual gates and flops. These all, you know, work like, you know, these are all ASIC modeling quality gates and flops. But this little bad boy here, that's C code. So right click, C++ interface, open C source. That's the source code to that device. And this shows, this is written to illustrate the main techniques you, you want to do. You know, it has the, uh, the commutation times, minimum on and off times. It has this defect, deceptively simple algorithm to be both constant on time and constant frequency. And, you know, it simulates uh, three milliseconds of a five kilohertz switcher in a uh, little over a second. That's brilliant. And that, that C++ interface is, um, when you say it's C++, is it written in C++ or is it very long embedded into a sort of C++ um, you, yeah, sort of wrapper? 
you know what? Let's just it, it's literally C plus plus, and let's let's take it from the top. Uh, there is, uh, let's uh, do a um, a new schematic, and I will show you how easy it is. So I first have to save the schematic someplace because of the C plus plus is in a different file. I'll just save it um, um, uh, and um, draw hierarchical entry. And I am going to make this not a hierarchical entry, but a, a DLL. So show symbol property, symbol type here at the bottom is a little Norsk O, which looks sort of like the zero on a computer terminal. So that's the, the, the spice prefix I use if it's going to be a DLL. Now I'm going to add some ports. I'll change the justification. So the port type is an input. The data type, it has supports all these different uh, data types. These you know, are partly Verilog, partly C++. I usually just use floating point. OK, Control C, Control V, oh. Control C, Control V, Control E mirrors. This will be the out um, port type output. I'll add a test vector before I write the C code. Now we're going to do the C code. And this is the part I wanted to do to answer your question. So C++ interface, open C++ source. It says, what are you talking about? You don't have any source code. Should I make you? And uh, here you have some options of other function types you need to clear. But let's skip all that. So this, it just wrote the C++ program. And there's this thing, implement the module evaluation code here. And I'm going to say that out is equal to in times in. OK? Yeah. So this is just C++. There's no Verilog at all. Right click, compile it. Down here, it says it was created. So add a simulation command, dot command 3 m on simulation. There's the input, and there's the output. And that's nice. how easy it is to write in C++. That's just yeah. very impressive. Right. Very impressive indeed. Oh, well, now <laughs> let's do Verilog. OK, Control-C, Control-V here. Now the module name here of uh, TV underscore X1, I have to give it a different name because it's going to be a different DLL. And I'm going to say right-click Verilog interface. Open Verilog source. What are you talking about? There's no Verilog source. Do you want me to create a template? Yes, please. And here is the ins and outs. So basically, it's the module with the port names being the um, uh, arguments to the module. Implement the module here. And I'll just say um, sign out equals in times in times in. Right click compile. Now there's two things that it, oh, 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 I have a typo. So actually, let's do this again, and we double click on this, and it's it, it puts the cursor to the line with the error. So there's right. a bit of an IDE here for the whole developing your source code. And let's try again. Compile. You look at the bottom. It says the ver it, it, it create it, it converted the Verilog to C plus plus, and then it made an interface for the C plus plus to the um uh to the simulator. So actually. C++ is the is the is what's connected to the simulator, but it will convert Verilog to C++. Okay, that's what's happening. Now let's run this simulation again, and there's the input, the output, and there is the output cubed. Fantastic. So uh, it's very impressive, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, everybody's minds start to um, to whir as they think of um, yeah things that they could. Could do with this and implement with it that uh, haven't been possible in the past with previous tools. So very impressive. Super. We're